Guys, I've got a winter video planned to air a week from today, but I wanted to start a series of fragrances. Probably going to do about three of these fragrances. It's 20 all-time favorite fragrances that still smell great today. If you want to find out what the fragrances are, 20 of them today in part one, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about 20 of my all-time favorite fragrances from any year that still smells great today. So there are fragrances that get reformulated that do not smell great, no longer smelling great, or there's something wrong with it, it's just gotten too thin or something. But there are ones that get reformulated that still smell great. So it's a mixture of older fragrances and newer fragrances. And I'm going to do about three parts. So next Saturday is a winter fragrance uh, video. And I'll, what I'll do is actually uh, separate the parts uh, within uh, a month from each other. So that we can air other themed videos as well. But today it's all about my favorite fragrances. This is the first of three parts. 20 fragrances, unranked video. We're going to go ahead and get started with the first fragrance from the house of Serge Luton. This is Fi Anaigi. One of the most difficult names and fragrances. But one of the most beautiful fragrances. It smells super fantastic. It's pine in the end. It's kind of like a pine forest with incense smoke and also kind of like a dried fruity touch with a balsamic dry down. Just imagine you're walking through a cold, frosty, you know, pine forest with a little bit of smoke coming in from incense. You're kind of sitting near a fire perhaps. Maybe you're not walking. Maybe you're sitting at the window and eating like a dried fruit compote or something. There's some spices in there. That's basically what I get with this one. It's super delicious. Only sad thing is Serge Luten's fragrances are a bit more challenging to get these days because they pulled out of the USA. Moving on to one of my all-time favorite fragrances, uh, more modern. There's been a 2014 release and a 2020 release. I'm going to highlight the 2020 release because it still smells great, as good as 2014. You probably know what I'm talking about. This is Dior en Parfum. Uh, one of my all-time favorite fragrances must be featured in a list in the first video, actually, because I love it so much. I just brought back three of these uh, from uh, Paris. It's Iris, Leather, Sandalwood, Ambret rose, oud, cedar, and orange. It's a super delicious fragrance. It's very powdery. It's also very leathery and very makeup lipsticky as well. Just imagine, you know, you were a little kid. You kind of got a hold of your mom's purse. This is going back in time when lipsticks had a smell. I don't know if they do these days. I haven't come near one. But you, you took their mom's lipstick and kind of smeared it all over her leather purse and that smell of the lipstick, the makeup-y kind of smell against the leather is what you get with this one. It's also super concentrated against the uh, Dior Homme Intense or even Dior Homme and especially Dior Homme Cologne. This is Dior Homme Parfum, one of the best fragrances ever created. For me, it's one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Moving on to the house of Frederick Mull, I gotta have this one in this list as well. It's Portrait of a Lady. Um, uh, this goes back to 2010. I don't think I mentioned the year for the Serge Luton is from 2009. This is 2010. It's been 12 years since this came out and I discovered it two years after it was launched and I've been a fan since then. It still smells great even under Estee Lauder. It has gotten thinner but to me I feel like my nose has adjusted to however many different reformulations it's gone through. Yes definitely it's thinner but I just really love the way this particular fragrance smells. It's rose patchouli, incense, sandalwood, musk, benzoin, cloves, and raspberry. So there's definitely an ambery presence here in the dry down, but you got that little fruitiness from the raspberry that's really nice, contrasted with the spices of the cloves. There's the woods, the roses, very, very prominent here, along with the patchouli and the incense. Portrait of a Lady, a great scent uh, created by Dominic Corpion. Uh, this next one's got to be on the list as well. Psychedelic from Jovoy from 2011. We're going to get to some older fragrances soon, but I'm kind of getting uh, some of my most, most favorite fragrances out of the way as of late. Uh, this is uh, about 11 years old, and it's all about patchouli. Patchouli with amber, vanilla musk, labdanum, geranium, and rose. You know, the rose is sort of kind of very faint in here. To me, you get a very ambery presence here, and that amber touch with the labdanum and the amber and the vanilla against the very earthy patchouli creates for a chocolate cakey 
kind of a touch here, like uh, experience. Uh, it's not necessarily gourmand, but I think just a combination of those kind of notes together with the patchouli is what it does. So I would call this like a dabbling in gourmand when it's not quite gourmand. Psychedelic, an awesome fragrance, a uh, wonderful fragrance that uh, definitely deserves to be one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Okay, moving on to the fifth fragrance I'm talking about today. It's going to the House of Tower Perfumes. And we can go to 2005 with either Laird or Desert Marocaine and go to 2016 when the X-Straight version was launched, uh, A Cour de Desert, this one right here. Uh, one of my all-time favorite smells, favorite fragrances. It's super fantastic. I love this fragrance. It smells great. It's a dry amber, but for me, there is definitely a noticeably difference, not smell-wise, but more experience-wise in uh, comparison to the, the uh, original Laird Desert Maro came from 2005 to the Accur de Desert from 2016. I do get a little more syrupy, molassesy touch here, less dry in comparison to the Laird Desert Maro Cane. But overall, for me, it's a very similar smell. It's a very dry amber fragrance, very spicy. It features amber, coriander, labanum, petagran, cedar, vetiver, birch, patchouli, and oak moss. One of the best, one of the greatest. I uh, really, really love it. It's a toss up between which one, uh, if you want the dryness from the original and less longevity go with the Laird Desert Marocaine. If you want more intensity, go with Accur de Desert and uh, a wonderful uh, fragrance, as I said. Love it. Moving on to the House of Nishanay. This is Ambra Calabria, this one right here. Really a very, very unique smell in fragrances and original in, in a way that I love ambers a lot. But with this one, it's a fresh amber and a green amber, if that makes sense. Launched in 2015, so not that old. And I've been a fan since I put my nose on it for the first time. It's green leaves, galbanum, bergamot, amber, vanilla, coriander. So the amber and vanilla is basically what happens in the base. With that spice in the heart, the coriander, it's beautiful uh, spice here. The coriander is the actual, it's not the actual herbs, it's the seeds, I believe, is what they're referring to. Because I get that quality in this particular fragrance. But every Everything else is very, very green, including the bergamot in here. It has a greenness, but more citrusy, a bit floral, and then against that green leaves and the galbanum, which has some bitter uh, vegetal touch. Wonderful fragrance. It's Ombre Calabria from 2015. Super in love with that particular fragrance. Next, go into the house of uh, Maitre Parfumer Gantier. This fragrance dates back to 1988, so we are going back in time a little bit. And still smells great today. It's uh, Ombre Perso, one of the best amber fragrances next to the Laird Desert Marocaine. Uh, this is uh, amber, but very, very dense, very, very syrupy, also very spicy and balsamic. Um, so has tolu balsam here in the base and you definitely experience that uh, balsamic touch here. And then of course it gets resinous for me as well because it has the myrrh note in here. So you've got a very uh, balsamic and resinous touch here with the amber. Of course some spices and aromatics and it's powdery too and you definitely notice the lavender in here it has a very aromatic edge to the fragrance a great scent if you don't know this one you gotta know if you're in love with ambers ombre perso from maitre parfumer gantier uh, a great fragrance now we're going back in time to 1979 i'm actually going with a concentrated version of the original fragrance that launched in 79 we're going to the house of hermes this is Oda orange vert or concentrated orange vert is the one I'm featuring here. I first discovered it in 2001 on a trip, and I've been a fan since then. The trip I took was to New Orleans, Nolens. Uh, it was very hot in the summer, August, and I walked into a Saks Fifth Avenue store, and uh, that's where I discovered the fragrance, and I just really loved it, because it was so hot and humid, and when I just walk in, go right to the fragrance department and spray the stuff on, it really contrasts with your body heat and the cold air inside, and that freshness kind of coming, and you know, wafting when you spray it. I love this stuff, really, really great stuff. It's oranges, basil, cedar, patchouli, and amber, and I feel like there's the branches and the leaves of the orange tree in here because there's definitely a bitterness here but a wonderful fragrance it's Eau Orange Vert or Concentrate Orange Vert Concentrate de Orange Vert from the House of Hermes. Uh, one of my all-time favorite, favorite fragrances. Really in love with that fragrance. Now we're going into some more classics. Going back in time to 1973, going to the House of Aramis. It's 900, this one right here. In fact, I just spoke about this fragrance with someone at one of the recent events here in San Francisco at a perfume shop. Aramis 900 is a great discovery for me. I've been a fan since the late 70s, but you know, I never wore it. I, I smelled it off of dad. And also, so I, it reminds me of Aromatics Elixir from Clinique. Uh, 
which are both created by the same perfumer Bernard Chant and of course Aramis and Clinique were under Estee Lauder so they all work together. Uh, he's created a masterpiece here and it still smells great today even though this is a bit thinner and again this is also an eau de cologne. I believe this is an eau de cologne concentration. It could be eau de toilette but I believe it's an eau de cologne because it does say cologne on here. And I love 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 the way this smells. It's rose, civet, oak moss, carnation, patchouli, geranium, lily of the valley, vetiver, coriander, green notes. So this particular fragrance as I said does remind me of Clinique's Aromatics Elixir where that has a little more floral edge to it but when you remove that floral edge I think you're left with a very similar fragrance. The only other thing is I feel like this is a lot thinner than the Aromatics Elixir but in here it's all about the oak moss, the patchouli, the rose, the civet, carnation. Smells fantastic and it still smells great today. Aramis 900 Wonderful fragrance. It's thin, but the notes in there have a lingering power. So it doesn't act dense, but they linger, which is what I like about that fragrance. Next fragrance, I don't have the bottle with me. I actually dropped it and broke it uh, as of preparation for this particular video. So uh, it was there was a tiny amount in there, so I have to order another bottle. bottle. But I first discovered this fragrance from my dad. He wore it. It's Pornum de Caron by Caron uh, from 1934. It's a lavender bomb and it features notes of lavender, lime, ambergris, geranium, vanilla. And the notes together work wonderfully and it, even though it's targeted to men, I feel like it's a very unisex offering. Women can totally pull that off. It's very cozy. It's basically the combination of the lavender with the vanilla and some musky touches in there and some ambery touches as well from the ambergris. If you like that kind of thing, if you like like an amber fougere experience or a touch, definitely try Pour en Homme de Caron by Caron. Uh, unfortunately though, there used to be a lot of um, discounted stock out there. I can't find anything anymore, sadly. Moving on to another classic fragrance, but one of my all-time favorite fragrances that still smells great today. Again, all of the fragrances have to smell great today. At least they smell great to my nose. This is Dior Au Sauvage. So Dior Au Sauvage from 1966, another fragrance that my dad wore that I smelled off of him and uh, I've loved ever since, uh, well, I, ever since I started wearing it. But uh, I love it because um, it's a great freshie for men. But you know, I think women can totally pull this off even though it leans a little masculine if that makes sense. So it features notes of lemons, jasmine, bergamot, basil, rosemary, oak moss, coriander, carnation, patchouli, and vetiver. So in the dry down it does get woody but there's lots of aromatics here and lots of citruses. It's a very very fresh invigorating wear. And you can liberally spray this stuff on during the summertime when it's really hot outside and you leave kind of like woken like it, it wakes up your senses. Beautiful fragrance. Dior Au Sauvage. Still smells great today. Absolutely love it. That's from 1966. Next fragrance from 2007 is uh, Tobacco Vanille, this one right here. Yeah, this is definitely one of my all-time favorite smells and it still smells great today even though it's under Estee Lauder probably they've kind of reformulated it till uh, to death. But I think it's still pretty beastly for me. I don't know about you guys. It lasts and lasts for me uh, and I love it because it reminds me of a, the holidays and I kind of make this to be my Thanksgiving uh, fragrance. So uh, I, I love the idea of this particular fragrance because it smells like the holidays. The, the tobacco is in there and I, I've hung out with family and family friends and relatives too much that they all smoked and not all but most them smoked so you have that you know smells of the holidays and cigarette smoke that's kind of what you have in here it smells great by the way it's tobacco vanilla spices cacao tonka beans dried fruits and woods the combination is very very intoxicate intoxicating also garners me compliments and I really love it for Thanksgiving Day or any day during the holidays so tobacco vanille is smells fantastic and one of my all-time favorite fragrances that still smells great today all right going to the house of Guy La Roche this is Dracar Noir from the 1982. I wore four bottles of this uh, during the 80s until the early 90s and I think it still smells pretty darn good today even though it's gotten lots thinner than it used to be. Does that make sense? So it's a thin version of what 
I remember this fragrance being when it was really, really intense. And the way they made fragrances in the 80s is uh, not comparable to the way they make fragrances these days because they were eau de toilette concentrations, but so heavy in comparison to eau de toilettes today that are weak. But anyway, it still smells fantastic. It's a fougere, but a very 70s, 80s style fougere. Wonderful smelling fragrance and one of my dear, 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 dear fragrances because it's just a fragrance that totally takes me back to junior high and high school when I started wearing this one. I was wearing it all the time and I smelled great with it. But it's loads of lavender, oak moss, pine needles, mint, bergamot, coriander, wormwood, juniper, lemon, rosemary, verbena, and patchouli. Intoxicating and beautiful. Very manly and masculine. It's a fougere barbershop fragrance. One of my all-time favorite fragrances that still smells great today. It's Dracar Noir. Uh, from 1982 and another one classic for men it's Heritage by Guerlain the Eau de Toilette version from 1992 I believe both versions Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette both launched in 90, 1992 from what I remember but again this is just a wonderful wonderful fragrance really really great smelling classic masculine a bit like Amber Fougere not necessarily full-on Fougere but it has those touches and it kind of takes me in that direction but it's patchouli sandalwood, lavender, geranium, juniper berries, amber, oak moss. You know, uh, it'll go down as one of the all-time greatest men's fragrances. I really love the combination of notes, really do. Uh, and even though I've been really getting uh, back into uh, Habi Rouge, uh, this one will always be one of my all-time favorites. Really love it. Guerlain's Heritage and Eau de Toilette Concentration uh, and, uh, from 1992. Always will be one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Next, go into the house of Anique Goutal or Goutal Paris. This is Eau de Adrienne in the male bottle uh, and uh, Eau de Parfum Concentration. Originally launched in 1981. Uh, still smells fantastic today, although once again, the bottles have gotten a facelift. I posted about it on Instagram. I recently discovered they got more of a bit of a vintage look on the, the, the labels on the bottles, but still, the bottles look great to me, and the smell is super fantastic. It's a tart, citrusy uh, fragrance, uh, lots of lemons, so it's a bit sour, a bit astringent, and of course, you've got lemons, cypress, citron, grapefruit, mandarin, aldehydes, and ylang ylang. It's super fresh, perfect in the heat and humidity. It cuts through that warm and kind of cools you off, and that's the kind of fragrance I enjoy in the heat and humidity. It just totally, like, wakes up your senses, and, you know, you know, wakes you up because you get really exhausted in the heat. I do, at least I do. Uh, the only other thing I should mention is this is a male bottle. They do have a feminine bottle, but both of the fragrances are exactly the same. I mean, both fragrances that come in the masculine and feminine bottles are exactly the same. They just do that. I don't know why they do that, but either way, Eau de Adrienne, one of the all-time favorite fragrances of mine. I started wearing it in 1999, and I've been a fan since then, although my dad wore that one too. It's uh, one of one of his uh, all-time favorites. Up next, going to the house of Creed, and this is probably going to be the only Creed that'll be in either of these three videos that I do. This is Royal Oud. I think it's one of my all-time favorite fragrances, not only from Creed, but ever. I think it smells super fantastic. I really love it. Very unique smell. It's very, very sexy. It's got this kind of ashy tobacco-ish touch under there, and I just am addicted to it. It reminds me of a freshness and greenness with a smoked ashtray kind of cigarette. I, I don't know where I get that from, but I love that about it. It's also the very first Creed fragrance that I had ever bought back in 19, not 19, 2013 is what I should say. Like two years after this came out. It's cedar, pink pepper, sandalwood, musk, angelica, galbanum, lemon, and oud. The Oud is a very, very light, but if you like original smelling fragrances, I think this smells very, very original. Really wonderful. All-time favorite Creed fragrance that's unvaulted. There are a few that are vaulted, like Royal English Leather and Windsor, but once you get past those, this is super amazing. Royal Oud, wonderful fragrance, launched in 2011. Next, going to the house of uh, Profumum Roma from 2006, this is Aqua Viva. And I am featuring this in this video, I probably should have put it in another video, but they, these two have similarities. If you're looking for uh, like a very tart, lemony fragrance, you can go with either. But I feel like the Aqua Viva is a little more thicker, it's also oilier. Launched in 2006, features notes of lemon, cypress, and cedar. A, a bit less complex, but still very, very tart and citrusy. Lemon fragrance with woods and greenness and you know the thing I like about Perfume Aroma fragrances is that they're a bit oily so kind of like if you have dry skin it's also kind of kind of good. You can rub these because these are um, 
not broken down into top heart and bass notes. Uh, if you're more curious to learn about the aqua, not aqua, but Profumum Roma fragrances, you can go catch my video I shot in their store in Rome where they discuss that uh, you can rub these fragrances. But either way, one of my all time favorite fragrances, uh, this is Aqua Viva from uh, Profumum Roma. Uh, the next one, going to the house of um, Zerjoff, it's a Naxos from 2015. Again, one of my all time favorite smells. It's very unique. You know, it does remind me of Pure Havan. This could be a great alternative. It's more expensive alternative though. Uh, since Pure Havan, I don't know uh, what's going on with uh, Mugler and men's fragrances. In fact, um, a little uh, segue here. Mugler's Amen has now become an online exclusive, so I don't, I don't think they're selling any fragrances anywhere for men outside of their website now. But going back to this, it's a great, I would call this an amber fougere style with tobacco and honey. And it's honey, tobacco, tonka, lavender, vanilla, cinnamon, and cashmere. And the reason I call this an amber fougere, it's got that tonka bean, which typically is found in fougeres in the base notes. And then it's got the lavender, which is typically found in fougere fragrances, which is more of a heart note or maybe a top note. But the fact that it has the honey and tobacco and vanilla and cinnamon makes for kind of a warm amber fougere touch, but a great smelling fragrance. It's Naxos from the house of Zerjoff, one of my all-time favorite smells uh, from 2015. Moving on to the house of uh, Parfums de Marly, Herod, uh, the very first fragrance I bought from Parfums de Marly, launched in 2012 and still one of my all-time favorite uh, fragrances one of my all-time favorites, uh, smells and everything like that. It's a tobacco once again, but it's kind of a different take on tobacco vanille. It's got like fruitiness, it's got lots of vanillic touches. It's also a bit ashy tobacco, but there's something a little more subtle about this one, a little more classy, a little gentlemanly about it that I really, really like. And it definitely deserves to be in a list of my all-time favorite fragrances. That still smells great today. This is Herod uh, from 2012. And the last fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about there's two versions of it. First launched in 2012, and it was called Sange Don Bois de Thé. I know I butchered that up. Then it became uh, Bois Mysterio, this one right here. Totally uh, much less <laughs> complicated than this uh, version. But both of them smell very, very similar to me. I absolutely love these fragrances. Really love the cumin in this. Bois Mysterio launched in 2019. Again, this one 2012, almost 10 years later. But it features notes of myrrh, leather, cedar, cumin, bay laurel patchouli, neroli, jasmine. Wonderful. Very long lasting, very beastly, a little sweaty, sexy, musky, leathery goodness. This is Guerlain's Bois Mysterio or Bois Mysterio and that is the last fragrance uh, that I'm going to talk to you about. Again, as I said, I'm going to do three parts of this video series, so stay tuned. Uh, every month I'll do another one. Stay tuned for that, but let me know what your thoughts are on these uh, 20 fragrances. Are you a fan of these fragrances? And if you have a list of your favorite fragrances, all time fra favorite fragrances that still smells great, put a comment down. Now I would also want to mention like Polo Ralph Lauren is one of my all time favorite fragrances, but current formulation is not that good. Eternity by Calvin Klein is also one of my all time favorite fragrances. Current formulation does not smell great, so I left things off like that and they will not appear in part two or part three. So if you are putting down a list of fragrances, make sure that you are definitely aware that they still smell, smell great, you know? They, they should. Uh, most people think they smell great. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.